I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive, where you'll find great stories simply told. The dangers of drunk driving are well known. How to prevent it has been a topic of interest for over 100 years. New York was the first state to put a law against drunk driving on the books. The year was 1910. The methods to check for drunkenness weren't very sophisticated. Police officers were told to look for bloodshot eyes, slurred speech, and the smell of alcohol. A person could also be asked to walk in a straight line. Needless to say, it was hard to convict anyone with those guidelines. In the early 1930s, communities saw an uptick in alcohol-related car accidents, but scientists were hard at work to find a chemical test that could assess the level of alcohol consumption without having to arrest a driver. They knew alcohol levels could be revealed through blood tests or urine samples, but how was an officer going to accomplish this on the road? At Indiana University in 1927, a biochemistry professor, Dr. Rolla N. Harger, found a way to detect alcohol in the breath, but the equipment needed was large. Within a few years, Harger developed a portable tester. Since this was new technology, the police realized they couldn't ticket anyone using the results, but Harger volunteered to ride along with the police so that they could all experiment. A stopped driver was told to blow into a balloon. The air was released into a liquid mixture and alcohol caused the solution to change colors. The testing was more accurate if the person was brought to the police station, but the portable device also showed color changes that were impressive enough that sometimes the driver would confess to how much he drank. In 1936, Dr. Harger patented his device, calling it the drunkometer. Who received the first ticket for drunk driving? In August 1937, Roy and Neva Gordon were involved in a three-car crash. The description of the accident was that the Gordons were passing another car on a two-lane road. They crashed head-on into an oncoming automobile. Their car catapulted back into the car they were passing. The Gordons were both taken to the police station. They were asked to blow into a drunkometer. They admitted to having had several drinks. In court a few days later, their attorney was debunking the drunkometer. They had all just returned from lunch, and he admitted to have having had three cognacs and a beer. The lawyer said he would test the machine in court himself to prove it didn't work. He blew into the machine, and the chemicals changed color slightly. He then realized his strategy backfired. If he had four drinks and the drunkometer barely registered, his clients must have consumed much more. But ultimately, both of the Gordons walked free. There was so much fuss about the testing that the police could no longer remember which one of them had been driving. Therefore, no conviction. In 1954, a member of the Indiana State Police, Robert Borkenstein, invented an improved machine, the breathalyzer. He created a handheld model that could be used in the field as a screening method. Today, some cars are now fitted with a breathalyzer style of device. The driver gets into the car and breathes into it. If the alcohol level is high, the car won't start. No drunk driving. I'm Kate Kelly with America Comes Alive. Look around and see what inspires you.